If someone asks, is the SpaceX Raptor the world's most powerful rocket engine? We can immediately say, no. The most powerful rocket engine ever flown are the solid rocket booster motors of the Space Shuttle at 1,200 tons of thrust each. The most powerful liquid propellant engine is the RD-170, a four-chamber engine flow on the Russian inertia boosters producing about 750 tons of thrust each. But SpaceX's Raptor is definitely the best engine ever made. Why? Find out today in this episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX Raptor has been in development for the better part of a decade, going through a number of iterations. At its core, it's like other engines, burning chemical fuel to produce thrust. However, the significance of the Raptor engine was not only on the thrust number, but a few other important things. The Raptor engine is designed for the use of deep cryogenic propellants, fluids cooled to near their freezing points, rather than using the crypto propellants at boiling points, which is more typical for cryogenic rocket engines. The use of subcooled propellants increases propellant density to allow more propellant mass to be stored within the vehicle's tanks. Engine performance is also increased with subcooled propellants specific impulse is increased, and the risk of cavitation at inputs to the turbo pumps is reduced due to a higher propellant fuel mass flow rate per unit of power generated. The oxidizer to fuel ratio of the engine would be approximately 3.8 to 1, as stated by Elon Musk. Musk revealed that their target performance for a Raptor was a vacuum-specific impulse of 382 seconds, or 3,750 milliseconds, with a thrust of 3 mn, which is 670,000 foot-pounds, or a chamber pressure of 300 bar, 30 MPa at 4,400 psi, and an expansion ratio of 150 for the vacuum-optimized variant. Especially, Raptor has been claimed to deliver long life and more benign turbine environments. Specifically, a Raptor utilizes a full-flow stage combustion cycle where all the oxygen would power an oxygen turbo pump and all the fuel would power a methane turbo pump, which pushes the efficiency of a rocket engine to a new level. This is truly significant. In addition, in 2019, engine manifolds were cast from SpaceX's in-house developed SX-300 in Colonel Super Alloy, soon to be changed to SX-500. The Raptor engine uses a large number of coaxial swirl injectors to admit propellants to the combustion chamber, rather than pintle injectors used on the previous Merlin rocket engines that SpaceX mass-produced for its Falcon family of launch vehicles. The other is the use of methane. No methane-powered rocket has ever made it to orbit. With Starhopper's test hop, SpaceX's Raptor is the first time a methane-powered rocket engine had actually taken flight. Methane prevents a buildup of deposits in the engine compared to other fuels like kerosene, a process known as coking, while its higher performance allows for lower cost. Most previous rocket engines have relied on using fuels like kerosene in place of methane, but the main benefit of using methane is it has a higher performance than other fuels, meaning the rocket can be smaller. Its lower cost also means the total cost of launching can be brought down. This could be crucial because of the number of Raptor engines SpaceX is looking to build is immense. Now that is something special about Raptor components, but let's dive into the Raptor comparison with other engines to understand all aspects of the matter. For many years, the F-1 was still king of total thrust output at sea level with 6.77 millinewtons, and SpaceX Merlin is actually the leader of the thrust to weight ratio with an astonishing 198 to 1 ratio. Yes, they are powerhouses. The Raptor is currently at 2 millinewtons. But now one of the factors that affect both thrust and specific impulse is chamber pressure. Generally, the higher the chamber pressure, the more thrust and potentially more efficiency the engine gains. Higher chamber pressure lets an engine be smaller for a given level and also improves the thrust to weight ratio. Unfortunately, the baby here is actually the F1, which had only 70 bar of chamber pressure. And the Raptor is now online as the new king of chamber pressure at a whopping 270 bars. And they hope to get it up to 300 bars. 300 bars is like being three kilometers deep in the ocean. All right, that's enough of the specs of the engines. Let's look at the operational considerations, starting with approximate cost. The most expensive engine is RS-25 with a sticker price of over $50 million per engine. And as for the Raptor, Elon mentions he thinks they can produce the Raptor for cheaper or close to the Merlin engine if they can remove a lot of the complexity of the current version. So for now, we're talking around $2 million as a pretty decent ballpark. 
Another strong consideration for the cost of the engine is whether or not it's reusable. The RS-25 was reused over and over, with the record being 19 flights out of a single engine. Well, after a few months of refurbishment. We know a design goal for the BE-4 is to be reused up to 25 times, and I think the Raptor hopes to see up to 50 flights. On the topic of price, there's actually some things that get really interesting when we start looking at these numbers. The first is a number Elon has mentioned as one interesting metric in a tweet in February of 2019, saying they hope to make the Raptor get better at their thrust to dollar ratio. Now that's an interesting concept when you think about it. Who cares how much an engine costs if one big engine is cheaper than two smaller ones for the same thrust or vice versa? So let's actually take a look at the dollars to kilonewton ratio of these engines, starting with the most expensive which is the RS-25 at a ratio of $26,881 per kilonewton of thrust. Then the RD-180 is at 6527 to 1 kilonewton, followed by the F-1 at $4,431 per kilonewton, and then the Raptor at around $1,000 per kilonewton. Put the parameters aside. The development process of SpaceX's Raptor engine itself can also be regarded as an engineering miracle in the industry. Indeed, its speed and frequent iterations are beyond the reach of competitors relative to almost any other large-scale engine development program in the last half century. Raptor's 29-month 100-engine milestone is an extraordinary achievement. We can look at the competitor, Blue Origin's BE4. This engine is also methane liquid oxygen with a design indicator similar to the Raptor. Full-scale BE4 testing began 16 months before Raptor in October 2017. But in the following four years, only nine prototypes were manufactured and tested. And five years later, Blue Origin has only one engine almost ready to deliver to ULA. Meanwhile, SpaceX is building one Raptor each day and preparing for the first orbital flight. After all, the Raptor's design was not about being the most powerful. It was about balancing factors like cost to manufacture, reusability, and efficiency to suit the intended application as the Starship main engine. That just about wraps it up for today's episode. Hey, don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you very much and hope to see you next time.